make sure everybody has it. To create a material in the rendering settings, you need to go to the circle to the right of the little square. The square again talks about the interface, how we see it in Rhino. The circle is the material. We click there and we change the option types. Let's say plastic, for example. And then you may want the blue color, whatever it is. And then you can add transparency if you want and other things that you might be interested. I think keeping it simple is best. Once you change that, when you render, which is the blue sphere, it will change it uh, in the rendering settings. There you go. Let me close that. I talked before about, but I did not record it. I'm gonna record it. Not that if you right click on the blue sphere, you have all of the settings that you need to go through. Uh, current viewport to make sure you're rendering what you see. Uh, resolution, I will keep it between the 1500 and 2000 uh, resolution level. DPI 150, no more than 300 ever, no less than 72 ever. And then here I will say good quality. Okay, in this case, solid color. You have to check transparent background, uncheck ground plane, keep the rest as is, and you're good to go. You can click here, render, or here. Okay, I'm gonna pause the recording. I can pause recording. Okay, there is the rendering. Uh, you're gonna save it, as I mentioned, as PNG, not JPEG. PNG is important. And you're gonna give it a, like maybe project two, this is the one we're working. And then this is the Napson or ISO, ISO render. Okay, good. I mean, one thing I mentioned before that is not recorded is, um, what was it? I knew I had to say something else. They will come to me. Resolution. Oh, yeah. So if you somehow you're rendering, it doesn't look like what we're talking about here. It's actually that you need to change the current render to render render. That's what I was talking about. It could be said uh, to V-Ray, and we're, we're not working with V-Ray just yet. Okay. So let's leave it there. So next step, we go to our Illustrator and what we're gonna do is place. We place our ISO render, place it. And we have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking back and forth. First thing is layers, new layer, and I'm gonna call it a render or image and then drag that image to that layer. So it's, and then make sure that the image is actually underneath the lines, no? So I'm gonna take them down here. So problems, anybody can tell me already? It's definitely not the same view. And this is a classic thing that is gonna to happen to you guys. And I actually didn't do it intentionally. So I had a problem, no? If I try, the next time will be to try to adapt this as best as possible, but notice how you can't because it's a different view. So I failed. That means that my make to d is probably, my make to d is probably not a, the isometric because that was an isometric southeast. So this guy, is the pers no, this is actually, I don't know what this is. So this is one of the cases where you say I made a mistake. I delete that one because I don't know what view is that. I can't replicate it again. So I'm gonna say set view, make sure it's in Southeast isometric and make to the this guy again. And then only the view. Top view.
and export selected. And this I'm gonna call it project two ISO. And I'm gonna open it. I export is Rhino. Okay. Nice. Control C. Control V. Where where it should be. That is the same. Now we have to change layers again because obviously. I incorporate something different. So this is the same. And I'm going to use the eye drop. So I click on the visible and it will change it even faster. And then I'm going to select all of the dust lines. I click this guy. So that's just match properties similar to AutoCAD. I use the eye shortcut to this guy. And after selecting something, you can say, I want that to be exactly like this. Okay. And again, as I said before, place, and now we need to put, place the, the rendering. I'm gonna place it on the layer that is render. And this is where you realize that now, yes, it matches. We just need to scale it so it matches precisely. And that might take a little time. In my case, it came quite nice, but sometimes I recommend that you zoom in, take a look at everything. See here, it could go a little bit lower. Okay. One thing that works nicely to the images, if you want to change a little bit the properties of the image to make to give them a little bit of opacity transparency. So you can go to 80. So you will reveal a bit more the line drawings behind. Okay. So that will, that will be the thing. Hmm? Now it took me a while because again, when I brought the rendering, it wasn't matching the line drawing. And I know the rendering was the isometric. So I was wondering what the hell do I have here? I don't have the isometric. I don't know what that view is because I never save that view. So I said, Probably it's best if I delete it and I bring the actual isometric that I need there. So it matches perfectly the rendering. It might happen to some of you. I'm gonna do it a couple more times. I'm gonna do it now with a perspective. So you see that it should be working a bit more efficiently. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go to the perspective view, which is perspective cool. And I'm gonna do the rendering again. If the settings, are, have been saved here, which they are in the same views, you're good to go and just click on the rendering. Now, I don't want to spend all of this time waiting for the rendering to happen because it's gonna take a long time. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of time, I'm gonna reduce the resolution considerably. So something like, 640 and then low quality. Okay, so it's just the resolution. It's gonna have, the pixels are gonna be much bigger. If you scroll in, it's like not looking good, but this is just an issue of making that number. Um, as I mentioned, 1500 and DPI 150 and then good resolution here. So you see how it took almost no time. Save. PNG. 
two. Okay. Place. And make sure that's in the layer render, good. And now match, because it's from the same view, they should match precisely. And I guess here I didn't make a mistake, which makes me happy. Press shift when you scale this, obviously, so you don't lose the portion. And there you go. Now you say, why don't we do it in low res? Well, the difference between having this like shiny and cute and beautiful and this one, the shadows and the reflections are very crappy. So you wanna make sure that you're in a bit better resolution, okay? And again, in the other one, what I did is select the image, change transparency, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, and then I'm suggesting color somewhere else, maybe in the section. This could be a different way of getting color there. What I'm gonna do is turn off everything and you can just click and then drag around so you get rid of everything and then turn on only the clipping plane layer. Okay, there you go. I would like you to use color here in a way that is different, just using Illustrator. And we're gonna use the K shortcut, which as you know, is the life pain bucket. I think, you know, the way life pain bucket works is basically you press control, select a bunch of lines. And then when you go to K, you can paint with whatever you want. You can paint with lines of a particular color. So for example, uh, this darker magenta, and then with a fill, I can say a fill highlight blue, just to give a shake. And then you can click inside the different boundaries and then it gives you that, that color. No? And then I can go to the layers and turn on these guys. Good thing about this, you also see a bit of what's inside and the, the dash line. So that would be the way I would I would do the color in the section to mark the plane of the cut using the life plane bucket in Illustrator. Uh, you could also introduce at the same time the rendering there behind. We could do that very fast. So we do the rendering again. So let me do that fast. A clipping plane. It's uh, up here, turn on. I'm gonna go to the other view, set view, cut, there you go. And select, well, we don't need to select this to make to this clear. And what you would do is just another rendering. Again, this one is low res, but in your case, it should be a little bit higher if you wanna put the rendering there as well. You can do save as, oops, uh, save, PNG, render three. So it's just for you to know that you could change this very, very easily. You can change the material if you were to use uh, paint and then green, whatever, to, to shine you and then render again, you change the material of the layer. PNG, replace, close, go back to here, to Illustrator, place, and select the green guy. Place it there, make sure that it's in the layer rendering. Shift to scale. And shiny and nice. You, you have both the, the color we use for the section and the green is the rendering behind. So you can combine those with no problem. You could do that also if you want to with an elevation, they tend to look very nice. So for example, I'm gonna go to the top view and I'll just hide the clipping plane and you can go to whatever you want. 
you know, center and render the view. Let's just change the material for the sake of it. I don't know, let's do gem, something like that. A diamond, no, diamond, emerald. Oh, boy. Again, the resolution is very crappy, so it's not gonna look great, but you know, gives you a, an idea of what this is about. Was taking long. Well, that looks horrible. Change of plan. Let's say a glass, maybe that works. Yellow, orange. Nope. Okay, let's just keep it simple. Hopefully that works. It's not the best thing ever, but whatever. You get the idea. You try different options. Render PNG always, you bring it here, place. And um, up, 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 um, you place it here. Make sure there's in the layer you want it to be. Sometimes tricky to organize and scale these properly. You can use the arrows. There you go. So just thinking of if you had a project or what you can, you can do the renderings of the top elevation or the elevations. You know, this will be exactly the same or rendering from the front, et cetera, et cetera. And these are more like, hey, this is the space, what the space is about now. So, and I'm saving that obviously. And oftentimes in InDesign, it just, I mean, you can relink, but uh, most probably it's best if you delete and actually place it again. Click once again, and there you go. That will be your thing. Again, it looks crappy, but if you right click, high quality, that's how it looks, very crispy and nice. Although I recommend working on typical display. And then one thing I haven't mentioned, you everybody needs to place here a title somewhere. So T, uh, title, and then you write, the title of your thing, you know? Okay. And in the first, only in the first option, you write down uh, top, top elevation. Uh, you write down elevation, front elevation, side elevation, perspective, etc. Only in the first one, the rest don't need. Maybe the title here, should be bigger, the main, main title. I don't know what size. I will just help you out with the size and all these things as we go forward. Okay. And once you're done, file, export. I wanna overwrite this guy. Yes, I can. Export. And here is Chuck. problem, no? I place this image on the do not print layer. So that's gonna happen to you. And you're gonna come with this problem as well. Uh, hey, professor, I can't see, I have, I have placed them in InDesign, I print them, etc., but I can't see them when I do the PDF. Well, that's because you place that, the images in the layer do not print. Okay, so just make sure they go to the image layer. And you go export again. All right.
double click. Control L and look how crispy these guys look. It's vector base and raster combined. No? So here you can see a problem, and I just want everybody to be mindful of it is that the dash lines on top of the visible lines. So that's actually a problem. So I recommend that all of the hidden lines are actually underneath the visible lines. And this just like came afterwards, which so is drag it underneath, not inside of a layer underneath. And then just export, just save this. We're going to go back to InDesign. And if it's a link, it should say, hey, you change something, you double click there, and it changes automatically. And then you just say, export. All right. And perfect, they're behind. Okay. Let me stop that.